Okay, let's have a look at polymers. The word polymer is used to describe large molecules that consist of repeating structural units that we call monomers. So the word monomer, mono means single, so it means a single unit of something. And the monomers are connected by covalent bonds. So let's look at a quick example and we'll name and draw how we represent the polymer. Let's start with a molecule of ethene, which we could also name as ethylene, and that's our monomer unit. It's a carbon or CH2, CH2 unit with our carbons joined together by a double bond. If we put two of these together and our conditions are right, we can polymerize those two molecules. So you'll notice my, in the center, central diagram here, we've got our monomer unit, our CH2, CH2, but we've joined this to another CH2, CH2 unit, this time by a single bond. You'll also notice that we've broken the double bond between our two carbons on our monomer unit, and that's the same for our second unit as well. Now we can keep adding ethene or ethylene units until we form a multiple or a large multiple unit that we call polyethylene or polyethene. Now we can represent, because we don't want to draw a chain out that might have thousands of these monomer units joined together, we need some way to represent that in a shorthand notation. So the way that we do that is to draw our monomer unit. So this is our ethene unit. You'll notice I don't have the double bond in there because in our molecule here, we don't have our double bond. But we do represent this particular unit in here. So we've got our CH2, CH2 unit. We put an N before it to represent a very high number, or it could be a low number, but generally it's a very high number because many of these units have joined together in the polymerization reaction process. We surround the monomer in a set of square brackets, and our N is to the left-hand side. Now you may also see this written in a slightly different form. In this case, I've got the CH2 to the CH2, so that's our monomer unit. We have a line that indicates that our monomer is joining to another monomer on this side, the same on this side, and like we did in the first process, we represent the monomer with N units. So let's look at what influences the chemical properties of polymers. So the properties are determined by the side chain interactions of those monomers. So we can get a substitute, substitution of a hydrogen for a halide or for another um, alkyl group, and it's the interaction between these side chains that will produce the properties of that particular polymer. In general, the greater the interaction, and in this case we're talking about an attraction between those two side chains, the higher the tensile strength, or the stronger the polymer, and the higher the melting point as well. Let's look at three examples of those types of interactions. In the first one, we can have hydrogen bonding, and we can get that through an amide um, side chain interacting with a carbonyl side chain as well. So let's look at an example. On the left hand side I've taken a small fragment of our polymer with our NH group. Now because our nitrogen will be slightly negatively charged, it means our hydrogen will be slightly positively charged. That's in our amide group. We can also get the interaction with another polymer, and in this case if I've got a carbonyl group, which is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, that oxygen will be slightly negative in charge. So we can get an interaction between this slight positive and this slight negative in a process that we call hydrogen bonding, and that interaction is quite a strong interaction. And this leads to a high melting point and high tensile strength in the polymers that contain this type of functional group. On the other hand, we can also get dipole-dipole bonds between chains, but these are a little bit weaker than our hydrogen bonding. And we, we find this in molecules called polyesters. 
And this is where we get the interaction between the dipoles of one chain and the dipoles of another chain. So the melting point and strength, or the tensile strength of polyesters is lower than for our molecules that contain hydrogen bonding. So they're weaker and they melt at lower temperatures. But as far as polymers go, they're more flexible. Now we've got a third type of bond as well, which is our van der Waals forces, which are very weak interactions. So the molecules that contain only van der Waals forces between the polymer chains will have low melting points and low strength. And an example of this type of bonding is our polyethene, which we looked at on the first, on the first page.